Hi, my name is Mario, and today I want to talk about how to use a 3JS to make kinetic typography effects. Uh, for those of you who don't know what 3JS is, 3JS is a 3D JavaScript framework that uh, works with WebGL and lets you do amazing things. Things in 3D, uh, also 2D, you can make or take advantage of the GPU to whatever your needs are. And uh, well, that's pretty powerful by itself. Okay, uh, yeah, let's do this. So I'll skip a bit of boilerplate uh, for time's sake. And well, the premise is quite simple. We have a 3D object and we want to paste on top of the surface some kind of texture that has text. There are other several ways to do it, but I found the most simple one just to use a texture. In this case, it has the word universe and uh, well, sample it in the on the texture. So for that, first we'll need to load the texture. Uh, here, const texture equals new create that texture loader that load image. And in this case, I'm going to pass a callback function just to fix some weird line artifact that happens in this in this case. So it's texture dot mint filter. Okay. And instead of using a mesh normal material, we have to use a shader material to move things uh, to yeah to modify the shape of the torus geometry. Did I mention that this is a torus geometry or a donut? And uh, and also change its colors. So for that, we use a shader material and pass a vertex shader, a fragment shader, and some uniforms where we'll define time. So we can move things and our previously defined texture. U texture. All right. Uh, also, let's enable the transparent flag because we're using a PNG. Uh, we want to make things transparent. And uh, yeah, for now, let's use three dot uh, double side. So it also renders the inside of the donut. Uh, before jumping to the shaders, let's update the time uniform. U time uh, value equals uh, the boilerplate already has a clock variable, so we can get the time. And yeah, I think it's it's an error, <laughs> and it's well uh, because let's see. Yep, 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 yep. Can you spot the error? Because I'm not sure. U texture is not defined. Of course, it's not defined. So, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So we have now this red ring or donut, and let's jump to the shaders. So a shader is a program that runs in the GPU, like blazingly fast. And uh, we have two types of shader we're interested for this. We have a vertex shader that runs for every vertex of a object and, uh, and a fragment shader that runs for every pixel. First, let's jump to the fragment shader so we can sample um, the texture on the surface. So for that, we do back for color equals texture 2D. These are built-in functions from GLSL. Um, you texture. So and we'll use the texture coordinates called VUV that tell where to put uh, the image pixels on the 3D object. So, okay. So we do color. And yeah, we can see it right now uh, that it says universe. A bit weird, but we can make it more interesting. And for that, let's repeat the texture with the UVs. So let's define uh, UV, 
uh, equals it's equal to the varying of uv and um, put uv here and it's the same for now but it starts to get more interesting when we use the function called frac which takes the fractional part of a value and it's perfect for repeating things uh, so let's do uv times uh, 2 for now to see what happens. Yeah, it's repeating both in the x and the y axis. Uh, let's use a variable instead, call vec2, repeat this vector2, and uh, let's do something crazy like 6. 6 on the y axis, I'm sorry, x axis, and 12 on the y axis. So and we should see a lot of text oh yeah it's starting to get better now oh nice uh now let's add time to it and for that we do back to um i think it'll it'll look better if we move it like like this and for that <laughs> like this and for that we need to pass time to the y component path yeah, looking good. We can accelerate the speed. Yeah, and even make it more interesting before jumping to the vertex shader to move the shape. Let's see, we can like bend the text. And for that, I think we should do maybe that x plus equals sign of the y component. And this looks, yeah, this looks twisted. Let's change the amplitude of that. A uh, bit, uh, yeah. yeah, I think it looks, I think it looks good. We could even add time here and it would oscillate from zero to one, from zero to one. I'm sorry, from minus one to one because sign. <laughs> uh, okay, that it started to look uh, interesting to me. Even if we got in the middle, I'm sorry, in the inside of the donut, we could even take a screenshot of here and it would look interesting by itself. Yeah. All right. So I think that's all for the fragment shader for now. So let's jump to the vertex shader. Like I said earlier, the vertex shader runs uh, per vertex. Um, not sure if it means... Uh, too much right now, but uh, imagine it like it from each point that makes the geometry, uh, whatever you pass here, will affect that point. And uh, I was thinking of maybe bending like some sort of uh, rubber band or like old tire, like it's too soft. So for that, let's do this. Let's call uh, this variable transformed that is equal to the position and uh, use transform here which should affect nothing for now but when we do this transform plus equals sign of position that well transform this z component is plus equals uh, the x for now plus time uh, what well, u time yeah you should see something something more interesting now yeah i like it let's do y let's do y oh nice yeah I'm, I'm starting to like the result so you can imagine you can tweak whatever you want here and we're just using uh trigonometric trigonometric functions for now but you can see the possibilities if you use like noise functions and um, or the crazy math stuff by itself. Um, let's see if we, if we can add also the X component. Also, let's see if we could rotate rotate the mesh. Just to have a, another perspective for now. Mesh the rotation that we have to rotate the X. So it's the math that pi times yeah, a little bit, a little bit, seven, eight. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, oh, I think I'm, I'm, 
Yeah, kind of. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's looking good now, <laughs> in my opinion. So, so yeah, I think this is it for now. Uh, you can imagine that you, you can even just using one texture can get you like pretty far in terms of visual or aesthetics. Imagine if you could like replicate this uh, instead of using a torus, you could use a sphere geometry, a cone, uh, box geometry, and and having like thousands of box of geometries or instancing them could get you like a pretty interesting result. And uh, well, this is just like a overview. I I have a, another tutorial where I where I explain a bit. Uh, how you can use instead of just a fixed texture uh, using render targets, uh, which lets you like dynamically change text. Imagine it as if you have a scene uh, where you have text and that text you paste it on the geometry, but that's another kind of soup. So that's it. I hope you like it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and see you guys in the next one. Bye.